Hey y'all, I'm Rosalind and you are watching Right Ways YouTube channel. We want to say a huge thank you for watching from wherever it is you may be watching from. If you haven't already, go ahead and do us a huge favor by subscribing to our YouTube channel. We believe God has something special just for you. So let's go ahead and get into today's message. Man, let's go. Let's go. Let's run with it. Take your Bible, uh, mobile device there. Uh, your iPad, lift it in the air. Let's make this quick confession. Say this with me. This is my Bible. I believe the words in it. I can do what it says I can do. I can have what it says I can have. I believe that there's power in the Word of God. I'm about to receive the seed of the Word of God. And the devil cannot steal, will not steal my seed. But I will prosper from what I receive today. And from this moment forward, I'll never be the same. Say it loud. The Word of God is the answer. The answer is in the Word. Amen. All right, let's run with it. Ephesians chapter 5, there at verse 14. Uh, our attempt is to close out this uh, opening series for the new year, which is our theme uh, for 2024. It's called Wake Up Living Purposefully with Worth and Intentionality. Come on, say, Wake Up Living Purposefully with worth and intentionality. Amen. Ephesians chapter 5, Ephesians chapter 5, there at verse 14, 15, and 16. If you don't have a Bible, you can catch it on our video monitors. I am re If you got to say, I got it. You're ready, say, come on. You need more time, say, wait a minute. Okay, I heard you up under your breath there. I will. You don't want to seem like you're by yourself. I will, but the rapture won't wait now. You know it ain't waiting for you. You can't be like, God be saying, come on, hold up, Lord, hold up. Now, I ain't no hold up with that when that comes. All right, here we go. Uh, Ephesians 5, verse 14, 15, and 16. Follow me on our screens. It says, wherefore he saith, awake thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. See then that ye walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. Why? Redeeming the time because of the days of evil. Come on, read verse 16 again. Redeeming the time because of the days, because of the days are evil. We're supposed to be redeeming the time. The Amplifier says, making the most of the time, buying up every opportunity. Making the most of the time. And so there are some things, right? Sin, sin affected man. Sin affected man. The, uh, the reason we see over 99.009% of the stuff we see in the earth is because of sin. It, it was not the will of God. Sin entered the earth. It entered man's life and changed the state of man. And so God, the Bible is saying, the writer is saying that you and I, we, we not only need to get saved, but we got to wake up to this saved life because there are some things that you and I are responsible for redeeming, for getting back some time that we got to make up for in some things because sin delayed us. Sin set us back. Sin knocked some stuff out of order, and we need to wake up. We need to wake up because the way we get them back is not by working harder with our hands, although God is going to use our hands, but he's going to use our hands um, and in the way that he's pre-designed our hands. So we can't even just set our hands to anything. We need to be setting our hands to the thing or the things that God has already predestined, prearranged, planned beforehand for you and I to live so we can see this good life that you and I are supposed to get back that was taken away from us because of sin. Come on, say amen to that. Okay, y'all going to make it a little hard for me. See, we got we to gotta be so careful. You know, if God was real, why would this happen? Why would this happen? Why would this happen? Well, if, if I had a brand new car and gave it to you and you wrecked it, you couldn't blame it on me. 
The earth is in the state that it's in because of the man that was in charge, not because of the God that created it. Because when God made it, it was good and very good. We, he gave the earth over to man. It was man's job to God the earth, not God's job. It was man's job to God the earth. But that man failed. So you got a fallen man or a broken man working with something that's good. A broke man is always going to break a good thing. Amen. So when we get saved, we become whole again. And when we become whole, we got to wake up to this wholeness. And when we wake up to this wholeness, we then walk wholeness out. That's what we're talking about in this series about us walking out wholeness. So, so this, this statement, wake up, that, uh, that we've coined, it's a metaphor. It's a metaphor that deals with you and I coming into a kingdom conscience, not conscious. I'm not talking about us getting our own spot. Oh, can I say it like that? Yeah, I can. I'm not speaking, I'm not talking about us, uh, uh, just like I said earlier, getting in and out of God. Trouble hit us. Right, and then we get our conscience right momentarily so God can get us out. No, no, no. We weren't supposed to live uh, uh, kingdom conscious. We're supposed to live with a kingdom conscience, which means I'm ruled and governed. The seat of my belief is in God's way. Not me just trying to get with God so I can get out of trouble, but me actually living in God because my mind has been renewed to God's way and I'm conducting all of my life God's way oh okay okay I got you I got you so so it deals with you and I coming into this kingdom conscience see a kingdom conscience tells me I'm not supposed to be broke broke is not the will of God oh it's quiet up in here struggle struggle because I listen to me carefully wording is so important because I Faith struggle does not mean that struggle is the will of God. Because I face a, a, a difficulty does not mean that difficulty is the will of God. We got to be so very careful in the church talking about God allowing stuff. Because if he's allowing this stuff, what is he not allowing? So that's a blurred line. God allowed that to happen because, well, so did he allow no disrespect. Did he allow the man to rape the woman? Well, he didn't allow that. So how can you say he allowed that? How, how, how did you become the judge over what God is allowing and not allowing? See, sin entered the world. Sin entered the world. Uh, uh, um, uh, 1 Timothy 3.16. Put that up there on the screen for me. Oh, my Jesus. 2 Timothy 3.16. Let's look at that real quick. I got a little time. Got a little time. Did I say first? I'm sorry. That's 1 Timothy right there. Go to 2 Timothy. I'm sorry. Without controversy, that's 1 Timothy. The greatest of mystery of God and his God was manifest in the flesh, seen of angels, led up in the... I'm not talking about that's the wrong one. 2 Timothy 3.16 says all scripture. Ain't that what that say? Okay. Okay. That's the one I want right there. All scripture is given by the inspiration of God. The NIV said it's God breathed. Right? All scripture is given by the inspiration of God, and the scripture is profitable. That means for your game, it's profitable for doctrine, reproof, correction, listen, and instruction in instruction in how to govern and do life God's way. I got a question, church. Just looking at that one scripture right there. How, how does God, how does God or what does God use? As, as, his, as his car to get us where we need to be in life. Okay, I heard over here. His word. It, I don't see up there where it says God uses trouble. I don't see it up there. I don't see it up there. I, I see that he uses the scripture. So God's primary way of teaching you and I is not by putting us in trouble and letting trouble teach us. His primary way of teaching us is using the scripture. That's why Satan comes to steal the word. Because if he can steal the word, he can keep you away from the destruction that God is trying to use to grow you. He understands the importance of the word. You don't. 
Because if he can keep you away from the word, he can keep you away from the instruction in righteousness. So it's easy now to say God is doing it because I didn't get the instruction from the right place. I used a moment to try to say it was God and not the instruction. I, I, I see how y'all looking at me there. See, I got I to gotta get you out of that. Got to get you out of it because it's possible you blaming God for something the devil is doing. Luke chapter 9, start at verse 53. Amen. Look what the Bible says. And they did not receive him. Jesus, okay, so Jesus is headed into this city, but he really got his, his eyes on Samaria. He's, it's like the Holy Spirit is pulling him over there. And so because it seemed like he was in the city but didn't want to have nothing to do with him, the people wouldn't receive him. And that's what this is talking about. This is where we're picking up this story. Uh, and, and, and they did not receive him because his face was as though he would go to Jerusalem. When he was in Samaria look, looking at Jerusalem. And, and when his disciples, James and John, saw this, listen at the scripture. They said, Lord, will thou that we command fire to come down from heaven? Let's judge him. That's what he's talking about. Command fire to come down from heaven and consume the people like it did in Eli like Elias did or Elijah did. But he, he being Jesus, turned and did what? He rebuked them. Now, now a rebuke is not like, no. A rebuke is a, is a strong conversation without the cussing. That's rebuke. Okay. <laughs> He rebuked them, and then he told them what? Ye know not what manner of, oh, wow. You don't know what spirit you're speaking from. You think you got that from Holy Spirit to consume the people. He said, but that, that, ain't, that ain't the right spirit. You're speaking from the wrong spirit. For the Son of Man is not come to destroy men's lives. But the Son of Man has come to save them. And they went to go to another village. So where all this stuff about God destroying people, when Jesus himself is on the scene, you can't get no more realer than God on the scene than God in a body. And he say, I didn't come. I just want y'all to think. Please just think. Just think for a minute. If God was, if all, you know, I ain't got no problem with what folks are saying, but I just want you to think. I want you to leave your mind outside when you come the right way. If God is doing all of this judging to us, right, who are saved and mess up, and he about to get us for messing up, that means God is against messing up. There are atheist communities out there that are more deserving of his judgment than us. Why he ain't doing nothing to them? When we look in the Bible, you had the Philistines, the Je all them ites, they were serving idol gods. Wouldn't that be worth more? Wouldn't that be worth judging? Why he didn't judge them? We'll never read a Bible story that God was over there judging the Philistines for serving the other God. You don't hear that. So how are we missing it in this day and age when God is trying to get us to wake up? Uh, settle, settle that, that, yeah, that miss right there. It, <laughs> God is trying to get us to wake up. Come on, somebody say, wake up. Now, now, now watch. Okay, okay. Let me, let me move a little forward. Let me, let me go a little forward here. Here's a question I have to ask you. How intentional are you about living for God? Come on, say intentional. How intentional are you about living for God? See, we will pledge and allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands. One nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all, but won't even pledge an allegiance to yourself to take better care of yourself. We will pledge an allegiance to a flag that says one nation under God and liberty and justice for all and didn't give us liberty for 400 and some plus years and still don't give us liberty. But you will not pledge an allegiance to yourself to take better care of yourself. You will not pledge an allegiance to yourself to do right by yourself. But you'll pledge an allegiance to a country that cares nothing about you. 
something is wrong with that. How committed are you? How intentional are you about living for God? Philippians chapter 2, verse 13. You got to commit, man. You got to commit. You got to wake up and you got to commit. A lot of things that's happening in our lives is because we say, but we're not really Christian. I believe that's the difference of the two. When you are a Christian, Jesus is not just Savior of your life. Help me, Holy Ghost. But when you are, when you're a Christian, Jesus is Lord of your life. And as Lord, you're saying, not my will, but your will be done. It's what he wants. It's his body. It's not your body no more. It's not your body to put it in any bed. It's not your mouth to let anything come out of it. It's not my Facebook page. It's his Facebook page. It's not my social media. It's his social media. It's not my loins or my wound. It's his loins, his womb, so I can't put it in whatever womb. Or I, Okay. It's his. You can be saved and not a Christian, but you can't be a Christian and not saved. See, saved, I just believe he died on the cross and God raised from the dead. The thief on the cross never got the opportunity to be a Christian because he died on the cross. But he got saved. God just don't want us saved. He just don't want to be the Savior of your life. He wants to be the Lord of your life. And lordship comes with how we act. And how we deal with life issues. All this, all this separation we got going on in the church, we shouldn't have that. Folks holding on to stuff. Folks don't like stuff. Church clicks. We shouldn't. Yeah, you're going to like some other folks. We, we get along better than other people. You ain't going to be friends with everybody. But we shouldn't have all this stuff going on in a room full of Christians. How? We all are supposed to be being led by the self-same spirit. How is that one spirit that's in all of us got us acting differently? How are you still walking around hating folks? You know the message is going to turn like this, did you? Because we look foolish to the world. They looking at the church like it's the most confusing thing. How y'all following one God and now y'all acting differently? How committed are you? How intentional are you? To honestly living for God. Are you working on your manners? Are you even trying? I'm a Robinson. I'm a Robinson. I come from the Robinson family. And uh, Robinsons, Robinsons can be stubborn. Robinsons, braces, foxes, all of us are related to the Jackson, Alabama, Grove Hill. And I got Robinsons on both sides. I got Robinsons. I'm related to Robinsons on both sides of the train track. And we can be real stubborn. Now, we still give you the shirt off our back. We'll still do, be responsible and do whatever we got to do. But, man, in our DNA is that stubborn spirit. Yeah, man, my granddaddy, the most lovingest man you could ever met. But you knew when he wasn't talking to you, you already knew, get, just move out his way. He won't even talk to you and still give you money. I mean, just stubborn. So, and and I, I, I recognized that earlier. So, for me, for me... I knew that I couldn't be Christian and be that because when you're quiet, Satan talks. And he's not talking for you. He's talking against you. So my, my, my way of going against it would always try to be to get out front and say stuff first and question first and, and ask first about me. Because I know if you probably said something about me, I'm subject to get stubborn. So let me talk out and put it out there first because I, now I can prepare myself for construction. See, you got to know your being. Like, like I said at the 830 service and a pet way walked up to me. Like them pet ways. Them pet ways, all them pet ways fight. They can fight. All them pet ways can fight. And if I got anybody here, you know about them pet ways. You know them pet ways, man. If you, if you mess with one, you might as well mess with the, the ones in New York City too because they're going to fight. 
right? And so you, you got to recognize what, what runs through the DNA of your, of your family. Watch this. And then you also got to know what's your being in your flesh. You got to know what, your, what the being in your flesh is. And, and so let me, let's, let's talk about this because this is important. This is important. Uh, some of your being is you like to speak in tongues. Cuss. Looking at me one time, but I ain't feel with Holy Ghost. You let me break it down so you talk to Rock. They act, they trying to act like they don't know what I'm talking about. You feel like speaking in English, they just don't understand what I'm saying. But if I put some tongues with this, they'll understand it. And and you've been praying for the Lord to help you, but I'm talking about it just it's like out of your belly flow, flows, you know. Like it just come up out of you so you could be in your sleep and just all be on your sleep cut. You be like, Lord, they cussing in they sleep. You, well, see, that's a being in your flesh. Listen to me. You can't pray it away. As long as you in this body, you're going to have to deal with it. There's some people in the room, men and women, because sin has no gender. You struggle with pornography. Men and women, stop playing like women don't, don't struggle with it. Men and women, let me tell you something. You can't pray it away. It's in your flesh. Paul said, I know that in my flesh dwelling no good things to will I want to do, but to do I don't know because there's a war in my members. It ain't going nowhere till you lead this body. So what do I do with it? My deliverance in this is learning how to master it. James chapter 3, I believe, I, I didn't look back to it and find out what chapter it was. To the person, to the cusser, to the, per, to the tongue person. Because I could tell I had a couple of y'all in here today. So that tongue talker, first of all, you need to get filled with Holy Spirit so you can talk in tongues. So when you get ready to say, ah, oh, ribo, shata, mando, ho, shata, ta, ta, ta. So you need, <laughs> you need a replacer. You need a paraclete. That's what the holy, that's a theological term. One who will come and stand alongside and replace your cussing it with, with tongues for real. But also, watch this, you need the word. That's what 2 Timothy 3.16 says. And so for you, the book of James, let me help, because I, I can tell some of y'all need some help right there. You need, you need James chapter 3. You, you almost need to know that whole chapter by heart if cussing comes freely to you. So you can learn how to master your tongue and what James is going to show you is how to master it and the danger of one that is not mastered. Because watch this, there's a difference between cussing and cursing. But oftentimes people who cuss, curse and don't know it. So you tell a person, you ain't boo-boo. You know what that other word is. You don't realize you cussing and cursing them at the same, especially if you're talking to your child. And then you mad because they bring bad grades home. Well, all we got to do is look to the mouth who said it. So it ain't them that you need to whoop. It ain't them you need to tell to turn around. You come to me, I'll help you out. You say, Pastor, you need to whoop me because I, I, I curse and cuss cussed and cursed my kids and that's why they're not learning well that's why they're not obedient because the one they was listening to was speaking it over their life so you got to control that you got to master that it ain't going nowhere you got to master it the, 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 there are two types of deliverance in the bible there's one deliverance where something had to come out of the man they had to lay hands they had to cast that spirit out the bible says the man was clothed sitting in his right mind but there's another deliverance that we walk out. We walk it out daily by mastering our flesh. You get what I'm saying? So everybody in the room got a bend. Everybody in the room got a vice. And you need to know what that vice is and stop getting in line, asking people to cast that out of you. Right? If you're not careful, you're really asking to die. Because the only way it's going to leave is if you get out of this body. Now you have the wisdom of knowing that it's not me, it's on my flesh. And I got to master my flesh so that my flesh don't take control of me. It's just that easy. You keep coming up every, pray, pray, pray. No, you need to learn how to master, master, master. 
So you got to get in the Word, find out what the Word says about it. You need to have you a list of scriptures that you pray over yourself, right? You need to have you a book you can read about it. And every now and then, you need to go back to that book. You need to go back to that CD series. You need to find those scriptures in the Bible, and, and you need to be ruminating. You need to be going on. And as I'm going over those scriptures, those scriptures are helping me master that flesh. It's keep, it keep the flesh cool. Some of y'all, y'all, y'all like sleeping with more than one person. It's enjoyable to you. That's in your flesh. You got to master your flesh. <laughs> you said, quiet, it got, boy, them folk. I'm talking about. I ain't, I ain't moving on that or nothing. Well, the Bible says the shepherd supposed to know the state of his flock. So I know you. That's why I'm here to help you. So stop beating yourself up. Recognize that it's not you. It's on your flesh. And you got to learn how to control your flesh. Are y'all listening to me? Now watch this. Watch this. Watch this. What did I say? Go Philippians. Philippians 2.13. Okay, let's go there. Philippians 2.13. Let's look at that real quick. I got to give y'all some scripture because y'all be like, that boy didn't do nothing but talk. Four minutes. Golly, did they speed my time up? And I got to get y'all out of here because we got another service. Philippians uh, 2, verse 13 through 16 says this, For it is God which worketh ooh, in you, it's God working in you, both to will, come on, read, and to, to do his, his good pleasure. Do all things without murmuring and disputing, that ye may be blameless and harmless, that we, so that we'll be the what? The sons of God without rebuke in the midst of a crooked and perverse. So we're not supposed to look like the crooked and perverse. Oh, Jesus, look at among whom ye shine as the light in the world, holding forth the word of life. That I may rejoice in the day of Christ that I have not run in vain, neither labored in vain. Ain't that something? The Amplifier says at verse 15 that you may show yourselves to be blameless and guiltless, innocent and uncontaminated children of God without blemish, faultless, uh, unrebukable in the midst of a crooked and wicked generation, spiritually perverted and perverse among whom you are seen as bright lights, stars or beacons shining out clearly in the dark world. So we don't supposed to look like them. We're supposed to be different. And it's supposed to be a noticeable difference. Amen. So listen, here's the statement I want to make. Don't be your own holdup. Write in your notes, Colossians 2 and 6, Amplified Classic. You can go and study that. I'll give you something you can kind of read and read out yourself. Listen, don't be your own holdup. You need to work on working out what you know is unlikened to God and bad for you because it's going to be your holdup. Stop blaming everything on the devil. What's going on in your flesh is not the devil. Now, he may try to agitate it, but what's going on in your flesh is not the devil. Your flesh is another enemy. You got two enemies, the devil and your flesh. So stop blaming everything on the devil, and you need to recognize that this is a, a, my flesh acting up. And if it's your flesh acting up, you need to, you need to cool down that pea look of cooler. That's old school. I don't think y'all know what that means right there. Now, so let me close with this. All this year, all this year, our aim is to live purposefully. Come on, say live purposefully. I, 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 you are under my teaching. I pastor many, some of you I preach. I'd be glad when you finally make me your pastor. I preach to some. I pastor many of you, thank God. But I'm, 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 I'm. I'm pushing you to live purposefully. Stop just wandering through life. Stop it with this, you only live once and trying stuff one time. You're going to live life purposefully. What do I mean when I say that? Because we all have an assignment. We all have a purpose. We all have something that God has called us to and God has called us to do. And you'll never get to your to or your to do if you're not living life purposefully. You don't have time to waste. Now, what do I mean when I say us too? I'm talking about us too deals with you giving outside of yourself. 
He's called us to some things. That deals with you giving outside of yourself. You don't want to be a dead sea. A dead sea is a person that just takes everything and they never have a, a, a contributory where they can get it out. So he gives us an us to and he gives us a to do. And the to do is your purpose side. That's the out from you side that glorifies him and increases you. We're not just going to be putting our hands on anything. We're going to be putting our hands on the thing and or things that God has strengthened our hands for. And we're not just going to be out here vacillating, just touching something and chasing money and trying to get jobs because they offer up. It's okay if God gives you the permission to get in and get out, but we're not going to live a get in, get out life. We're going to live a life that's God-led and not emotionally driven. We're going to live purposefully. My aim is to get you, thank you so much, my aim is to get you to live with worth. Come on, say worth. You are valuable. You got to say, I don't care from the guttermost to the uttermost. You are valuable to God. You got to start seeing that you're worth some. I don't care for those of you that have been sodomized, those of you that have been raped, those of you that are that are falling deep in sin, and the sin makes you feel like you're nothing. For those of you that are battling with same-sex identity, none of that has anything to do with your worth. You are worthy and you mean something to God. I told him on Friday night that God is committed to your success. Got to start living like you're worth something. I know my worth. And if you don't see my worth, then I just have to get from around you. It's okay. We have to park friendship here. I have to put distance between you. You're going to stop hanging around people that don't value your worth. You keep going around your friends and don't care nothing about your salvation. They'll talk about your God and you'll stay there for the sake of friendship when it's God waking you up every morning. They'll demonize your Jesus and talk down about your Jesus and you'll still stay friends with them. How is that? And you say you love him. A lot of stuff you're going to talk about. I'm, we janking, but you get, you get too many mama jokes out your mouth. I'm about ready to fight. Right? That third mama joke, you'll be like, hey, that's enough now. Talk about my mama. And then we're going to live life intentionally. You're going to live life with intention. What do I mean when I say with intention? We're going to be intentional in our faith. You're going to stop, you're going to stop this starting and stopping. Can I be an honest pastor? I'm tired of some of you walking up to me with your head down. I know I've been gone, pastor. Stay consistent. We will commit to broken relationships. You'll let him or her beat you and stay there for five and ten years and in and out with God. See, that's because you don't know your worth. You knew your worth, you ain't going to treat me like this. I'm valuable. And if you can't prize me as a queen, you don't need me. I'm a king, and if you can't prize me as a king, I don't need you. We dating anyway. I ain't got to put up with this. Hit the roll, Jack. Don't you come back. No more, no more. Anybody know that song? My mama used to tell me that when I was a little boy, I said something. She said, baby, I don't, I, I, I don't water twice in the same mud. I still remember that. So you only, what she was saying is you don't get me dirty one time. After that, if I get dirty again, it's on me. Why you like staying dirty? We're going to live life intentionally, man. We're going to live life with worth. Come on, you a queen. You're going to live life with worth. You a queen. Come on, you a king. You're going to live life with worth. You a king. You ain't just no anybody. You a king. You're going to live life with meaning. God got great things in store with you. You're going to stop dabbling in sin. You know, sin make you feel better about the situation, but you don't want to feel better about the situation. You want to be out of the situation. That means you got to leave sin alone because sin is not designed to get you out. It's designed to keep you in, and you got to wake up. Because if you don't wake up, you'll stay living life sleep. Raise that right hand. Say this with me. Lord, I pledge an allegiance to you and to myself to be better, to do better, to live better. In Jesus' name, I repent if I've come up short with your plan. 
for my life. But today, I pledge a new allegiance to you and to myself to do better, to be better, and to live better. I'm worth it because you died for it. And I will not let you down for what you accomplished on the cross for me. I commit, I pledge an allegiance to myself and to you to do better, to be better, and to live better. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so much for watching. Our prayer is that you're a little more encouraged and equipped after hearing God's word. Our vision here at Right Way is to build people to know God personally, grow in God relentlessly, and show God compassionately. If you would like to partner with us in giving, jump over to rightwayccc.org give. Also, make sure you like and subscribe and 